So we, before we mount our, our siren, we're gonna clean up some of this old wiring uh, from a radio, I guess, that used to be in here. And these wires here, they go out to, there's a, there's a solenoid on the firewall, real heavy duty one, that looks like it powers most of everything that's in the back. And these wires come off of that and I'm not sure what they went to. That's what I temporarily hooked up the uh, radio to. But I think uh, for what we're doing, um, when that power, when the the back has power, it the lights on it, everything lights up. And right now that's on the ignition switch. I don't really like that because I don't want to, you know, it's got those panel lights and stuff, all that lights up. And so I think I want that on a switch so when you flip the switch, it powers that solenoid that powers all the stuff in the back. And so I'm trying to figure out what all runs off of that. Obviously this comes off of that and I might see where they tied in the wires for this radio. That might be a good spot to tie in for our um, siren. Now they've got a switch here and I'm not sure what that does. So I think I'm gonna trace down the wires for that um, because if it's not really being used for anything, I may repurpose this for the, uh, to power that solenoid that powers everything in the back. And we'll put the siren on the ignition switch. This is running all the time. I don't really like that. Um, there's a lot of stuff and I'm sure it was done that way on purpose but as soon as you turn I, I'm guessing so you wouldn't have to have the key on to have the the lights going up top but I don't really like that because um, you have to you know flip the master disconnect to uh, get this thing to turn off so stuff like that I'm not crazy about uh, I'd rather just to be on the ignition switch, even if it maybe is on the accessory position, you know, that would work. Um, we might wire up that solenoid on the accessory position, or we could put it, you know, full-time hot and, you know, you, you pull it out and it, it powers that thing and powers the back, powers the lights, stuff like that. I don't know. The panel lights themselves, I think I would like to have separate. And I don't know what all is powered off of this solenoid. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, we've got a huge battery cable coming into it. And then here's our, this is hot all the time. And this would be uh, part of the powered part of it or the trigger for it. Um, and then of course that's a ground over there it's powering this. This is that wire that's going under the dash that I have my radio hooked up to right now, or the other thing. I'm not sure where any of this stuff goes. This is a ground to something. You know, I, I don't know. I know some of this is lights, panel lights, the little lights up there and uh, all that kind of stuff gauges and there's just a ton of stuff that we don't know what it is and I would just like to clean some of this stuff up and I don't want this powered all the time there's just no need of it uh, you know because these lights come on this one's burning out but the other side works but as soon as you turn the key on all this stuff comes on tank level you know a gate you know well the panel lights don't come on until you flip that um, to me I would like the panel light, this panel light switch to do these and this because, you know, if you're, if you're lighting up the gauges, uh, you probably want all this stuff illuminated as well, but it's not that way. And so that's probably what we will do, but I'm just trying to clean up some of this stuff for now just to get our siren hooked up and get some of this excess wiring that's not being used out of here because it just makes everything confusing. All right, so got this disconnected and 
over here and then I think this actually goes to the, the speakers up here the horns um, the radio wiring um, is kind of crazy um, it's going under here I assume that was a radio I mean it looked like it had one um, but I mean I don't know I'm gonna just trace this thing down so I can disconnect it uh, follow it down and get rid of it um, whatever it is we don't have it anymore so we're gonna get rid of this wire I just got to find the source of it um, you know it's yeah you can see all this mess this is what we're trying to fix on this thing see like this all this is about to come out as far as we've gotten is getting that radio wiring out it's going up into the panel so i think our best bet i think i can get in here and get the back side of the panel out i'm gonna have to get inside of this compartment and i think that will be a good thing because we can clean up a lot of the wiring it looks like two wing nuts and that door will open so let me get a little bit of this cleaned out and then we're gonna get in there and work on this and go ahead and pull some of this stuff out and it just runs all over the place you know i don't i don't know don't know no idea yeah all right about to be going in well we're getting personal with the fire truck here and we have gone in don't have much clearance here but we are working on getting these out which they do not want to come out and so I am trying to go back and forth back and forth to get them out without breaking them off I would like to keep those and not have to deal with drilling out a broken bolt so that's what we're doing and probably as soon as I open this up I will get swarmed with wasp which the position I'm in is not gonna make for a fast getaway so luckily I'm not allergic and um, shouldn't die here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I don't think there's any wasp in here. There could be, but I think they've all vacated. So let me, uh, let me keep on and try to get this out. Well, I figured I would take you all along and you know, we've got our pliers here so we can snip away. I have not looked in here. Back up a little bit. Probably a good idea anyway. And not too bad. Not sure what that electric motor is. Um, I'm assuming that's probably one of the reasons why there is a huge um, solenoid. Because I'm sure it's powering some of this stuff. Um, oh. That's not a electric motor. That's our, uh, I think that's the increase, decrease pressure for the pump. It can look like a big electric motor, but it's not. I think it's just a control. So, all right. So now that we're in, we can kind of see what mess we've got and Where's our radio wiring? Ah. So at some point it had a spot to plug in right here. And that's where that went. And of course that is no longer here. So We'll get rid of that. This is lovely. 
just kind of floating in the breeze here. Uh, we're gonna yeah, eat these things. Quite a few of those on here. Um, not as bad as I thought it would be, but pretty sketchy. Um, so yeah, let me try to make some sense of what we've got here. And I think what we'll do with this little guy is just snip, snip right here and just pull this wiring out, leave the plug there for now. In fact, I might just snip back here just in case we ever need that. We got plenty of wire there done and get this guy out of here. Now, we've also got this wiring mess that goes up to the PA speakers up there. So we're gonna just do a little snip there. And I've already snipped the other side. I'm gonna yank all that wiring out of here. And let's see what else we got over here. Plenty of nest. We'll just knock those out. Um, more of them over here. I really don't see any wasp nests. Maybe the dirt daubers kept the wasp away. Um, this is all for that charger. Looks like we'll have to see if we trust that thing enough to plug it in. But not too bad. I really thought it was going to be a lot worse than this. There's our little toggle switch. Looks like that powers some of this stuff. Uh, is that jumpered? Uh, yeah. So we've got power coming in here and then it feeds this side of it which feeds all of our gauge lights we might could just power some of the other stuff off of that. I don't know. Uh, this is for the charger and we need to probably make a new plate, maybe make a little stainless steel plate. This is pretty rusty over here and we will kind of retrim this out and mount that back in there. Let's see. Well, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get much more of this out of here just because I don't know what all of it is. Um, we can tie wrap some of this stuff up and try to clean it up just a little bit, but it looks like most everything is intact. I don't see a lot of excess, you know, stuff that's not being used. We got a wire right here that's not being used. And I don't know if these gauges work or not. I don't think any of them do. Uh, at some point we'll check to make sure they're getting power and if they are, then I guess they're bad. I don't know, or they're not getting a good signal. But it looks like for the most part, most of this stuff is okay um, for now. Uh, and we just need to do a little tidying up here and get rid of some of this excess and bundle what does need to stay. So. I'm gonna work on that for a little bit. So that electrical box on the one side was the um, uh, tank level sensor, which actually does work, or it, at least depending on how the water that's in it sloshes it around, changes. And then these are what all those airlines hook up to and they seem to all well for the most part they all yeah they all work and then that big thing on the other side that i first called a motor is our uh it's our relief valve control which i think it just controls the pressure and then this does not work, but it's our throttle. Um, so, you know, this panel's got a lot of cleanup to go. Uh, this was that radio connection. I'm sure it was to hook up a mic where you could talk through the PA speakers out here. 
uh, but we're not using any of that. Uh, we've disconnected the wiring for the PA system and we've got that much wiring out that was just not, yeah, was part of the PA wiring, that mess of stuff. And then um, we can now pull out this, all this wiring and come up here and it should all be loose now. And this is a, if you like getting rid of wiring that is not being used or is not done correctly, it is a good feeling to do that. And that is a lot of wiring that we have eliminated. So we can go back under the dash now. We got that. That's only one thing disconnected. An old radio that was in it. Uh, we're gonna leave the antenna wire in it for now. Uh, just because I don't I may put a radio in it at some point. So this will stay. I don't really I mean it's just one wire. Uh, but it already looks a lot better under here. So we're gonna go through, I think this is what goes to the um, to that, to the siren or to the lights. And so, um, when I turn them on, there's a burning smell and this fuse has been getting hot. I'll probably clip that out, put a new one in. Uh, it's probably got a loose connection that's getting hot. Um, and then we're going to flip this, probably change that around and hook it up off of this solenoid. I think right now that wire runs down all the way down to here. I think one of these is it. And so we can get rid of this wire or we'll repurpose this one maybe to power that solenoid if we want to have it where we can flip that on all the time instead of running off the ignition switch. I haven't made that decision yet, but I'll, if I end up reusing this, we're definitely gonna run this better because running a naked wire positive wire through a hole in the body is just asking for chafing to go on and short out and this is not fused at this point so that's not good so we will fix that um, and then we still have to figure out what all this stuff is and I'm probably assuming that it's gauges they go to that back panel is my guess but I don't really know so um, we'll work on trying to tidy that up uh, for the most part back here we're looking much cleaner we've just have these two wires going up here i'm not real sure what they are but we did have a whole mess of wiring hanging down here that is gone we will tidy this stuff up from the inside this is our wires going to our tank level sensor um so I mean, that's fine over running over that way. So let me continue on and I'm gonna, next thing I'm gonna hop on is figuring out what this toggle switch is and see what it powers and uh, see if it's needed. And if not, we'll repurpose it. So that toggle switch comes over to this wire over here. So this is on our little uh, solenoid and I don't know what it goes to, but it comes over and runs over into here. So not sure what that is. I think we'll get this little guy out of the way. Some kind of maybe radio or something that was in here uh, that is only now being used to hold up this airline. So we don't really need that, but yeah so let me work on doing that and i'll try to figure out where that goes my only thought is interior light maybe i mean it kind of looks factory there oh it looks like somebody just put some epoxy or something over a rust hole right there that's great 
and we got a wire right here that runs to the back that's just coiled up under the mat here. That's good. So I don't know what that is. Um, it may be part of this charging system. There's a part of the charger mounted on the back. This thing has two trickle chargers. One right here. And that just looks like that hasn't had any water in it. Um, and then one mounted on the frame rail in the back. there so this one over here looks a little newer it's probably our better option of getting working if we want to do that we may not probably really not needed probably could just get rid of all that stuff and put ourselves a little small trickle charger on it it's not like we really need it on this thing so let me get this out of the way and we're gonna figure out what this is and if it's interior light we might just put it right there if it's something else we'll see if we need it or not uh, I guess I could look underneath and see if I see it coming outside of the cab but yeah I would kind of think interior light though would run up this but maybe it runs down and along and up who knows but we will find out well i don't see anything exiting the cab so evidently it stays in the cab um so let's see if we can figure out where it goes and this is a lot of the stuff that we have to deal with underneath i mean look at the, look at this stuff We'll figure out what it is and do something with it. I mean, it just runs all over the place. It's just a wiring nightmare. But we will tackle it, I guess, a little at a time. You can see the exhaust here. You'll think I should make this thing, uh, straight piped the exhaust next way down you can see that's a fairly large pipe maybe four inch and then that looks about like three and a half coming out so it'd be kind of nice to just snip that off and run a run a full diameter pipe out the side there's no room on this thing for stacks or anything. All right, let me work on some more wiring mess. All right, so here's what we found. Dome light works with the headlight switch as it should. Uh, pulled that switch out. Oh man, look at that hole they put in there. Look at that. They use a punch. Wow. All right, so. Yeah, that's definitely the right way to do wiring. Um, I don't know what this thing does. Uh, this switch is bad, but I've shorted across it and I can't tell I can't tell what what happens um, so yeah I don't really know what to do with that switch uh, maybe let's do something here let's do a test we'll see if there's any draw on it all right, unplugged our buzzer so y'all didn't have to listen to that. So what we're doing is we're taking our test light 
and we've got one side hooked up to one side of the switch which should have power and then the other side we're going to connect over to here and we got nothing uh, if there's any draw on that wire it should light up the test light and it is not so whatever and just to verify we've got power on that side of the switch but when we hook up to here we can even try going straight to the wire there's nothing so whatever that is uh, it's not drawing power right now so what I may do is for now is just tape up this wire and at some point if we find something is not working and then we can track this down but as of right now uh, yeah it's not being used so let me work on this a little bit we may even take the switch apart see if we can repair it but most likely I'll just throw a toggle switch on here and we'll hook that up to the solenoid outside I've gotten way sidetracked on the project I was doing, which was installing the, the radio here, but I kind of wanted to get some of this cleaned up before I did that. And this is kind of what happens when I do that. I just kind of start going crazy with wiring, cleaning it up, finding out what does what, eliminating stuff that doesn't work, fixing hacked up stuff like no ring terminals on here. Yeah, stuff like that. I've got an idea and we went ahead and undid that bracket and from what I can tell this wire goes up and so the only things up there come up here you know we've got this which we've got a thing for it a controller for it but this thing originally had a center uh, single beacon and I bet that switch powered that beacon and we've got nothing else that runs up up um, interior light we've accounted for our uh, light up there we know it's controlled by that so that switch probably ran the original uh, beacon and I took this switch apart and cleaned it up just bent these tabs over took it apart the contacts in it were dirty and just cleaned them up and put it back together so this should be a good working switch now and we'll use this as long as it works to power our firewall solenoid So I'm gonna hook all that mess up. For other evidence that I'm right, see this blue in our wire? Let's look up here. I missed it the first time I looked up here. Look at that. There it is. So we'll probably just put some silicone over that. But that means that this wire should pull out of this. There we go. We can get rid of that. And we will uh, clean up that hole and plug it off so it doesn't leak. Well, that's good to know that. I'll just snip that off. So I've got an idea. Instead of running so much stuff off of the ignition switch, radio, lights, because I don't want that full power, we're going to reuse this solenoid. And I think, just to keep myself safe, 
Uh, I should never be driving with that on. So we're gonna hook that up with that toggle switch, that solenoid, and just power, we'll power this, we'll power that stuff, solenoid, lights, radio, all that off of that solenoid. Uh, we've got some inline fuses that we can repurpose like this one and we'll hook all that stuff up and I think that will work well. Now as far as this stuff at, back here I think I would like those on switches so we can always uh, you know, put a new drill through here and put like a marine toggle switch on here that would operate those. And so that way when you flip that on, uh, those would not come on. But I think for right now, because I want that separate anyway. So I think that's the route we're going to take that makes the most sense, right? My ignition switch is pretty full is the other deal. And so I think We'll put it in the accessory position, uh, which it already is, and here it click. Um, so we're going to interrupt the wire that is powering it right now and divert that wire over to our toggle switch. And the one that was running from originally powering the toggle switch, we will repurpose to power the solenoid. So we're reusing the wiring. The, those wires look fine. Um, we're just going to reuse those. So this one, we're going to take a look, is this guy right here. So we'll take that off. And this one's going to get rerouted to inside to the toggle switch. And then this guy is going to get moved to here. We'll put a new end on it, move it to here and hook the other end up to the toggle switch and that will power it. I don't really think there's any other wiring on here that would really need to be powered all the time. And if it is, it really needs to be isolated from this mess. Um, so we'll make sure, I'll disconnect this solenoid and we'll make sure that, you know, battery charges, the gauges work, stuff like that. Uh, all that stuff should be still running off the fuse panel that's in the glove box. But I'll double check once I disconnect power there. Mess that's in here. Um, this was not connected to anything. And it runs over to here. So I think we're gonna repurpose that for the um, lights up top and get rid of that fuse holder that's in there and we'll use this because this isn't being used and it'll run off that solenoid I think that'll be good and uh, I've got this wire undone I've got the battery disconnected again and so we're just gonna try to save the ring terminal that's on there it's a uh, it's reusable and I'll try to get this back in there. I think we'll pull this wire out to give us some more room. First part of our wiring is done. So we can do this one handed. Listen for the click. That's powered to the back. Perfect. And I'll mount that back in the dash and we will figure out how we want to power that. It could come off of that. Come off of that, that would be off the ignition switch. I don't know how much this thing draws. It's got a fuse on it. Let's see what size fuse it has. It is a 20 amp fuse. I'd rather that run off the solenoid instead of the ignition switch. I'll put that back in and we'll run a wire to the solenoid 
and power this look this guy so we got rid of that for now i just snipped it off there i'll go back later and undo this but i may yeah i'll go back later and and uh, take this cable off but right now i still have the battery hooked up so i don't well i guess this is on the we could go ahead and disconnect that that's on the other side of it but um i don't really want to mess with it right now so we'll leave that alone pulled that mess of wire out our pile of wiring is growing um, and so we're gonna take this we're gonna undo this which i pulled out it was doing nothing and we're gonna tie in right there uh, this fuse holder is gonna get repurposed for the radio we'll have a fuse out here or for the siren we'll have a fuse out here and there's gonna be one inside on the radio itself but this will protect the radio wiring or I keep saying radio the siren wiring uh, so we'll leave it like that it should be good um, so let me uh, there's a ground here for the radio as well we'll just go ahead and utilize it uh, later on we may clean it up and and eliminate this one that's uh, and just ground it in, inside there's no reason really for this to come out here other than it's there and it works. So we'll just use it for now. So continue on. All right, we've got most of our stuff cleaned up, checked, made sure the beacon light up there is working, uh, light bar, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so we are kind of now where we started, which is hooking up the, uh, siren and that'll be on a separate video that you may have already watched um but what i'm doing it's just speaker wire i mean we're running a speaker um but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put it in wire loom and kind of have it in loom all the way i debated running different kind of wire but I've got a big spool of this and it should be just fine, especially since it's going to be in the wire loom, uh, won't be in contact with oil or anything, um, should keep it safe. So we're going to go ahead and use it. Um, so yeah, let me run this and then um, we will connect it up down there and put it in some loom and then I'll show you all kind of the finished product a minute and it's a little better that's some excess wire from the and uh went ahead and just bundled it and we've got our radio or uh, siren over there and just kind of tried to clean up what was here that we left and what we pulled out is and that's the mess of wiring that we pulled out of this thing so oh forgot one there's another one so a lot more to clean up but that's a start got to clean up my mess here and uh, get all this other stuff put up tools and everything and be good to go thanks for watching leave a comment down below hit the like button and subscribe for more